both of us over the last few years have done a lot of solo traveling, whether it's uh, studying abroad or just traveling in general. We should we could start with travel fiascos. Oh, fun. Okay. Because over the summer, um, when I was in London at like the end of like my month long travel, I was like it would be really like cute if I like stayed in London for like a couple extra days um, to see like people from the other study abroad session. Um, so I stayed in like a really cheap hostel because I was like I am broke. Um, and then, like, the second night, I think, um, I was, like, so, like, first of all, like, to give you an idea of, like, the cheapness of this hostel, okay, it was, like, three bunk beds, and I've never seen a three bunk bed thing, like, they're normally two, so I couldn't, like, I was on the bottom one, and I couldn't even, like, sit up straight fully, because, like, then I would have hit my head on, like, the next bunk bed. The second night, I... Like, one of the people comes in, and she's, like, banging around, and I'm like, okay, this is kind of annoying, but, like, whatever. She gets into bed, and then she starts puking. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, like, are you kidding me? And she's above me, and she's, like, puking over the side of her bed, and, like, that's where all my stuff is. Um, so. Amazing. Yeah, thankfully, I had, like, my suitcase was kind of more to the edge, but it was open, um. So she kind of puked on like some of my like stuff, um, and then she puked all over my shoes because those were on the ground, um, and I had taken out my contacts because I was like trying to go to sleep, um, so I couldn't really see. Um, so I like crawl out like the edge of the bed and I like kind of like wander over to reception because my eyesight is literally like minus eight, so like very severely blind. <laughs> um, and then I talk to reception and I'm like, "There's a woman puking. Like I I need a new room." And they were like, okay, like, yes, like, we'll get you this new room. The next day, I, like, wake up super early, and I go to reception, and I'm like, this is what happened, like, can you, like, talk to her, or, like, can I get, like, monetary compensation, or, like, basically, like, what can you do for me? And they were like, oh, like, the manager doesn't come in for, like, another hour, so, like, you could just wait for her. And I was like, okay, I will, because, like, there was nothing else I really could have done. Um, so I wait her for her for like an hour. She doesn't show up, and then I wait for another like half an hour. And I'm like, is there like anyone I can talk to? And they're like, oh, you can talk to like head of housekeeping, but like she just left or like something like that. So I was basically like, chasing around management, and I was like really pissed. <laughs> so at this point, I write an email that's basically like, I want to speak to your manager. <laughs> I was super fed up, and I think my email was something like, I've stayed in hostels before, and like this is like the worst experience I've ever had, and I will definitely be letting all my friends know not to stay in this hostel. And then within 10 minutes, this guy pops up, and he's, like, low-key attractive, so I'm like, dang it. Oh, God. <laughs> and he's like, Miss Wang, like, did you write this email? And I was like, yes. <laughs> but, like, after I sent the angry email, like, housekeeping was like, we can, like, clean your shoes for you. And I was like, no, no, like, I feel bad. It's, like, not your responsibility to, like, clean the puke and stuff like that. Um, and they're like, we're going to clean the room, and then you can go back and check it. And if it's not good enough, we can clean it again. And, like, we can give you free laundry tokens. And, like, here are flip-flops for you. Like, do you need anything else? Like, do you need any, like, food and stuff? And I was like, no. Like, I'm good. Thank you. Because now I was like, now I'm that, like, asshat that's like, give me everything. And then I, like, went back to the room that I was originally in. And she's, like, sleeping. Or she's, like, in the bed and, like, pissed. Because I'm like, you haven't said anything to me. And you threw up all over my stuff. And, like, at least I want an apology. So, like the beds have these little like privacy curtains kind of around them so I walk up and I open the privacy curtain and I'm like hi how are you feeling and she's on her phone and she's like oh like I'm doing better blah 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 and I'm like oh did you sleep well last night like are you feeling better because it like you had a rough night and she was like yeah thank you like I think I was like sick I like been taking like some meds and like they've been making my stomach all funky and I was like oh damn like that really sucks do you know you threw up all over my stuff and she goes no I didn't know and I'm like interesting because like how do you not see puke all over the room but I just continued and I was like well you did and <laughs> she goes <laughs> she, she's like I can have it clean for you if you want and I'm like well I already cleaned it by myself so that's not really gonna help is it and she's like I guess not and I'm like so what how are you gonna help me because I cleaned your puke all of my stuff like off my stuff and that's what I spent my afternoon doing and she was like well like I can give you like money if you want like how much do you want and at this point I'm like should I really be like a hundred pounds but I was like whatever you think is fair so she ended up giving me 40 pounds I think um and then I gave 20 to the other woman who was staying in the room because like 
she didn't request a different room she just stayed in there the rest of the night and listened to this woman puke and I was like that really sucks um, so I gave her 20 pounds and I kept the other 20 pounds for myself and I think I bought like I don't know a, a, a bagel or something <laughs> many bagels a 20 pound bagel <laughs> I don't know what I bought with it. Maybe I just like I probably used it like on the tube. Nothing exciting, but I was still like. <laughs> <laughs> and then she was like, "Oh, I'm really sorry." And I was like, "It's okay. It happens to the best of us. I hope you feel better." And then I was like, "Bye." <laughs> In China, flights get delayed so often, and especially from like Shanghai because it's like such a big airport. The plan was, um, I fly from Shanghai to Tokyo, and I meet like friends there. We have like an hour or two hours to catch like the last train to the city we were staying in um and we like left enough time that we we're like okay we have like basically like three trains until like the latest one at night and then my flight got delayed like an hour and then i was like okay we have like two trains that we can catch and they got to like another hour and then i was like shit i'm not gonna make it and all my friends are already at tokyo just waiting for me at the airport so, like, i don't know if they should go to kyoto first and then i can like stay in tokyo by myself and then meet them later or if we should all just book room in Tokyo and then I get on the plane and the whole time I'm so stressed that I'm just like popping Advil in my like I was like I kind of, like, had a headache and I was just like I can't do anything about this because I'm like in the air and then um I get there and it there's it's literally I have 30 minutes to get off the plane and then there's a bus from the plane to the terminal like the the gate and then go through customs I had um I carried on my luggage so like thank god and then and then run from customs to the train station and it was and the bus was the slowest bus I've ever seen it was like the driver just like was just chugging along and I was just in the bus like shaking and panicking <laughs> and then when I got to um customs I like did not speak Japanese and there was like a really nice man and he was just there and I was just like like holding my phone with to like the train and I was like pointing at the time and I was like and then he like got it and he like rushed me to the front of the line and then like handed me off it was like it was like you know those like relay races with the baton but I was the baton <laughs> and then they were <laughs> passing me through the airport and like getting me through I'm pretty sure like they did not check anything that I had on and then I like ran down a bunch of stairs and then at like the terminal like my friend had already told the people like in charge of like switching getting the train pass so there were like three of them just waiting for me to like process one ticket and it was very great and we caught it in time do you take safety precautions i guess especially as like a woman going alone i should be more cautious i think i'm like naturally someone who's like too trusting and i like i'm like wow everyone's so nice i haven't run into anything like the only issues i've ever it's like at night sometimes like you know people yell at you and then you like speed walk and like if i'm walking like alone it's either like pepper spray in my hand or like keys between my fingers so ha ah, love being a woman like there was this one time when i was in london um i went clubbing with my friends and then i met a guy and he was like oh my friends are at this other club i'm going there now do you want to come and i was like but my friends are here and he was like well i'm going and i was like well yolo so i went with him um <laughs> And like everything was fine. After I was like walking back um, alone, because he was like, "Oh, me and all my friends are gonna like, go back to my place to smoke. Do you want to come with?" And I was like, "Wee, wee, wee." <laughs> Probably should not go with this like man back to his apartment to like smoke with a bunch of people. I don't know. Even though he seemed very nice, but I was like, this could be very bad. Um, so I was like, "No, it's fine. Like I'm just gonna walk home." And I start walking, and like most of it is fine. There's still like some people out on the streets. And then this guy is like walking on the same sidewalk as me, but heading the opposite way. And he starts like catcalling me. So I get freaked out because he's like coming towards me and he's like in my space. So I tell him to fuck off and he gets even more mad and starts like screaming at me. And then he kicks me and then I'm like, I gotta oh, walk I faster. <laughs> um, so then I start walking faster and I text my friend because um, like he was drunk so his aim wasn't that good and it like like he could have done a lot worse to me so I was like very lucky um and also there were enough people around 
like the vicinity that I probably could have like screamed and gotten help. Um, but I was like, I'm just gonna walk really fast now. Um, and I text my friend and I was like, ah, someone just kicked me. And then she like freaked out and like sent one of our guy friends to like come fetch me because she was like, you shouldn't have walked alone. It's like, I shouldn't have. And also like, the irony is that if one of my friends was like, I walk, I'm walking alone from a, like a club at like 2 a.m., I would be like, you're stupid, don't do that. But then me being like, don't want to pay for an Uber, so I'm going to walk. It's so easy to get wrapped up in the moment and be like, I'm having so much fun, I'm living my best life. And you're always like, oh, like things like that could never happen to me. But Ted Bundy was a very attractive man who murdered sorority girls in their house. And he was very flirtatious and everyone liked him, so... You never know who's gonna kill yeah. you. And also, you know how he lured people to like, oh, cause he like had a cast or something. Like he pretended to be injured, and yeah. he's like, oh, can you just help me put it in my car? Like, I'm like, I like, I was thinking about it, and I was like, I'm like not wary enough. I'd just be like, oh yeah, sure. I feel like I would probably be like, no, sorry, I'm like really late for something. Like not on oh, purpose. Really? I genuinely would probably oh. be going to something, and therefore I wouldn't stop to help them, you know. But if like they were attractive, which like Ted Bundy mm. was. Yeah. And they were like, oh my god, can you help me? Like, wow, ah, I'm broken. But what? Yeah, and exactly. Like, oh my god, yes, of course. Like, thank you for asking me to help you. I have, like, too much of, a, like, an optimistic view of, like, human nature. And I'm like, everyone is just here to make friends and be nice and hold hands and say, like, kumbaya. Um, <laughs> except it's not. I think USC just released a their, like, sexual assault statistics and it's like one in four or one in three girls maybe part of me is like so desensitized because i'm like you know i feel like every single girl i know or like not every but just like most people i know like if you go to like a party have been like inappropriately like groped like without consent and i feel like now we all we're all just like oh like you know it's just what happens i also think what's really common too especially as like i'm closer with more people in college i feel like a lot more people are like seem to be having similar stories where it's like like they hesitate to call it like sexual assault but it's mm -hmm. like i didn't want to but it was easier to do it than to say no or like yeah. afterwards they felt like like even if it was consensual in the moment afterwards they felt like really like gross and just like unwell about it um which like kind of Sucks. That's what it's something I'm worried about. Like, as an older sister with like a younger brother, I'm just like I always assume that guys, you know, should know all these things. But at the same time, I'm like, who's teaching them? These, you know, like unless they have like sex ed is not doing enough because these experiences are so common for women that they're like not talked to, like sometimes not even talked about between women because it's just like oh we've all experienced this and it's like doesn't seem as serious that it actually is. But it's also like we don't bring this up with like our male friends or our brothers or like guys that we know and i'm like i just wonder if they know that like oh like when we walk home after 10 p.m we have to hold keys between our hands or we have to like check our drinks like i feel like it's something that like and i'm sure like you know like what you brought up the example of like the guys bringing you drinks that like i'm sure like they think it's a really nice gesture and it, 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 and it is if they like are genuine but like also there's like a bunch of like worries that come within like a bunch of red flags that we have to check for yeah i was gonna say um the bold type like one of my it's like my favorite tv show um does like a really good job of kind of like kind of like talking about like the nuances of like like the whole like me too movement um so basically like the the episode is that like there is one like male character and like throughout this is like the third season and he's always been set up to be like the really good guy he's like he's a good person um and then he finds out that this woman that he went to college with wrote like a super famous like article basically about like how she like experienced like sexual like hara like um uh, sexual like harassment from this guy and then he like has to go profile her and then she's like oh i'm surprised you like aren't mad because like i based some of the character like on you and he was like what like i'm not like a sexual like assaulter like i would never do that and then she's like but like when we were going back from this event like i said i was tired and you said like why don't you just come up and have a couple of drinks and then i said like no it's fine but then he said and then you said like it's okay like it's just a couple of drinks and then when i ended up saying yes you ended up like making a move on me even though i said i was really tired and then you just spent the night even though i like made it pretty clear that i didn't want to do things 
and then like the episode is kind of about how like he like didn't even realize that the things he was doing was making women uncomfortable and then he didn't realize like that's how she felt and that like he was like well I thought it was a good person and like I had like close female friends and no one has ever told me like things like this so I think that kind of like falls into the whole like not talking to like male friends or like relatives about it but also that like sometimes like I'm not like excusing like the behavior Mm -hmm. but it can creepy man story uh, so this is when i was working at madewell and i like pick up the phone regularly as you know my job requires me to do um, to preface one of my like friends okay so i was really close with my manager um at madewell and she would tell me about like her life and her boyfriend blah 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 and like i knew her like i think like christmas was coming up or something so i picked up the phone and this man answers and he's like hello like i need some help finding like gifts for my girlfriend and i'm like okay like what does she like like can you tell me anything about her so i can like try and suggest things to you and he's like oh he's like very vague he's like oh you know like she's a very small girl very small like very tiny um she like likes like i don't know he said like lists of like vague ass hobbies and i'm like okay like um and i'm trying to like be like oh well like if she likes to lounge around, like, we have some great sweatpants, like, we also have, like, socks to keep her feet warm, you know, like, trying, like, really hard to, like, be a good sales associate, and then he's, like, can I tell you a secret, and I'm, like, um, yeah, and he's, like, he, sh- he goes, she actually works there, like, she's one of your assistant managers, and I go, oh, Savannah, um, and he goes, yeah, yeah, Savannah, and I'm, like, idiot, idiot for giving him the name, um, and then he's like yeah like she's really small um which i was like oh my god like yeah she is like crazy um crazy how you knew that um and then he's like so like what about you like how old are you like like uh and then he's like oh like i'm trying to like guess her size like do you know her size um like what size are you and i'm like oh like you know we're about the same size but like my brain is starting to be like kind of weird but my mouth is just like yeah just keep talking um so i continue talking to this guy and he's like oh like you have such a nice voice like what are you doing like do you do stuff on like the side like are you in school and i'm like at this point i'm like okay like this is too much because then he starts talking about underwear and he's like what kind of underwear do you think she likes and i'm like oh god um, uh, i'm like if, if you're real like she's my manager and we don't talk about our underwear preferences and if you were her boyfriend you would definitely know um so i was like oh um you know i just i got really backed up with like a line here like i have to go i'm so sorry but like i can definitely help you another time or you can talk to your girlfriend about it um and i was just massively uncomfortable and then after i got off the phone i was like i think i just like got a call from like this really creepy guy like i told my managers everything and they were both like yeah like you shouldn't have talked with him that long um Mm -hmm. and i like worked the closing shift a lot and like this was towards like december so like when i would get off at like 10 o'clock it would be like pitch black at night and i parked in like the parking garage um so i got like really freaked out about having to walk to the garage because i was like what if he like like he knows because before um I, he started being like really creepy i told him when my shifts were because i was like oh you're savannah's boyfriend like feel free to come in like during these oh times. I can, no like, help you. because my brain was just like oh my god i love like i love savannah like her boyfriend sounds great like i'd love to help him like pick a great gift out for her so i was like oh my god what if he comes to like my shifts and like stalks me and stuff and i got super freaked out and my managers like walked me to my car for like a week after that um nothing ever did end up happening like he never called back or anything but i was so like freaked out after that and i didn't tell my parents because they would have definitely been like you can't work anymore um but it was just kind of like it was like creepy because i'm like who does that and also like it was it was like kind of like scary how even though like i started to be like oh this is kind of weird i still couldn't stop talking and i like 
felt really bad just saying like no I'm uncomfortable because I was like I have to do my job as an employee and also it's just hard to say no to people when they ask me for things so creepy man story number three like a lot of times girls slash women like we put our desire to like please other people above our own comfort that's yeah. so scary actually yeah I don't I don't know I want to be like oh like it's fine like you know haha quirky and relatable but I'm also like that sucks that it happens to me you know but I'm also like yeah. I don't I don't have time to dwell on this stuff constantly because that's just not mm-hmm. productive for me because like people who do things like that where like they offer me rides or they're creepy and call me weirdly like they're not it's not impacting their day at all you know like they do their creepy thing and then they move on so it's like not worth my time to keep thinking about it even though like Mm -hmm. it sucks that that happened to me um but it's just like goodbye creepy man yeah we really did go from hostels to this (laughs) 